<laughs> I live in the Pacific Northwest. We're a culture of intense summer fun, followed by six months of hibernation during a time that we colloquially like to call the dark wet. But once the brightening wet begins to hit, something miraculous happens. People crawl out of their caves and reanimate into hipster naturalists living in a van down by the river. Also known as it's springtime, so let's enjoy nature and go camping. But with nature comes nature, bears, cougars, Bigfoot, one of which I recently had a run-in with. So after a bit of 3D modeling, a couple voltage multipliers, and some notoriously sticky resin, my solution, the Bear Blaster 5000. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I have over two decades of high voltage expertise and experience building all types of high voltage devices. And this project pff, used both decades of experience. Let's dig into it. So for your own safety, why not just carry a gun when hiking and camping? First off, many countries don't allow gun ownership, so there's that. And in the US, guns actually used to be recommended by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. But in recent years, WDFW and the National Park Service recommend non-lethal deterrents such as bear spray instead. That's because sometimes really large animals won't be stopped by just a few shots from a gun. Sometimes it just pisses them off, and then you get mauled. I mean, you ever seen the movie Revenant with Leonardo Decapitated DiCaprio? Yeah, it didn't work out too well for him. Bear spray, on the other hand, blinds while causing searing pain. A great deterrent, but perhaps not the only one. Instinctually, animals are trained to listen for signs of danger, such as the sound of lightning or tree branches snapping. The sharp crackling or popping nature of electrical discharges can be a particularly effective deterrent because it mimics those noises. So my plan is to design a handheld deterrent capable of ultra high voltages and loud capacitive sparks multiple inches long. Since this will be handheld and battery powered, really only one shape comes to mind and a very special circuit that'll fit inside that shape while producing ridiculous voltages. Voltage multipliers. These take lower AC voltages and boost them up to very high DC voltages. I figure one can go in this top half, a second multiplier in the bottom half, and run them in reverse polarity so that one develops a positive charge while the other a negative. The battery and driving circuitry can be held in the handle, and sparks will jump between the output of the two multipliers right here. It should be easy to build the multipliers with five to six stages and produce individual outputs of at least 120 kilovolts. Should be easy and safe enough to use. Design is everything, so I hopped onto Onshape per usual, and using my lightning gun as inspiration, I began bringing this shape into reality. I use Onshape exclusively for all my modeling work, and I'll leave a link down below for you to try it for free. I was really pleased with how this was turning out, so I shot it off to my Prusa to do all the labor while I ate chocolate and went for a walk. While I'm building the ultimate tool for self-defense, consider this. Enjoying nature in the modern era is infinitely safer than it would have been millions of years ago. For example, ancient bear lineage included the giant short-faced bear, which was one of the largest terrestrial mammalian carnivores to ever live. Six feet tall at the shoulders normally, and 12 feet tall when standing. And even though modern bears aren't directly descended from giant short-faced bears, they share a common ancestor. Alright, back to the bear taser. I switched to rose gold because it felt more royal, and next up was to design the voltage multipliers. This included specialty high voltage diodes and capacitors. This is the completed voltage multiplier. My perfectionism took front and center on this one, and it's designed to be really compact. From my experience, I was certain that this circuit would provide more than enough voltage for this project, so I took no delay in testing it. Taking the 10 kilovolt supply I mentioned earlier and attaching it to the input leads, showtime. Let's give it some power. Really? Woo! <laughs> Yeah, that's juicy, but still not the length of spark I need. It was a little underwhelming, so I submerged it in oil to ensure it's properly insulated. This helped a bit. What about this time? Yeah, as you'd expect, there's an improvement. Maybe like an inch and a half. Ah, uh, but I, I need more. I still need more than an inch and a half. 
I need sparks at least two inches long per multiplier for this project to work, and this full wave multiplier, it still wasn't cutting it. I've used half wave multipliers for decades, they're, they're great, and even though full wave multipliers are supposed to develop higher voltages, they require higher input current. If you can't provide that current, these bog down and perform like crap. That's likely the issue I was having. So I set out to build a more forgiving half wave. Here's the first. Designed to fit into the casing, it can accept up to 15 kilovolt input and should produce over 120,000 volts. Now I've got a six stage half wave multiplier. Will it perform better than a full wave? Well, I am prepared to find out. Oh, sexy. Oh, that's two, two and a half inch arcs and it's not even encased in resin yet. This is going to be epic. The results were super clear. A half wave version is going to work so much better for this project than a full wave version. Thank God, because full waves are a pain in the ass to make. <laughs> so I got to work making a second half wave. While the first had a positive polarity, the second negative. Well, there's really only one last test to do, and that's to run both multipliers in reverse polarity configuration, but with the same power source. This should develop about double the voltage out and to spark a hell of a lot longer than just two and a half inches. At least that's what I'm banking on. Three, two, one, don't blow up. Ah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. For added peace of mind, I ran tests again with it wired exactly how the finished product would be. So two power sources leading to absolutely legendary sparks five inches long. Now, building crazy circuits like this has only been made possible through years of experimentation and self-learning. And one learning tool I've used for close to four years is Brilliant. It's a colorful learning app with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI, which help you get smarter every day. And it does this through building problem-solving skills visually, as opposed to memorization. For example, I think the layout of their circuits course is not just fun, it's genius. It starts with really simple concepts, such as powering a circuit, and gradually progresses into cooler and more complex setups, such as split current, capacitive storage, and even transformers. It's easy to learn anywhere right on your phone whenever you have time, whether it's practicing or learning a new topic. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash plasma channel or scan the QR code on screen. You can also click the link in the description down below where you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now to put this all together into one beautiful little package. This ended up being more work than I thought. And this is the most nerve wracking part. I have the resin poured, all the air removed from it, as you saw, and uh, all the holes taped up on the form I want to pour it into. But I have to pour this perfectly, and I only get one shot. After giving the resin about 48 hours to cure, I added one last modification to help with the output adding a rounded nut to both of the electrodes. This dulls the electrodes and encourages the buildup of higher voltages. And with that, the Bear Blaster 5000 is ready. First test in three, two, one. Oh shit. I don't know about you, but this, that's a thing of pure beauty right there. Look, there's no way in hell any animal would charge at you with this thing going off. It worked so much better than I actually planned for. 
And in the case that an animal does decide to charge into an onslaught of electrical sparks, building a version of this into a staff for extra reach would make this a much more realistic defense tool. Granted, not as convenient. Numbers are important, so how much voltage is being produced? Considering the gap is about three and three quarters inches across and it has no problem jumping the gap, it's pretty easy to calculate the voltage. Using Passion's Law and knowing the gap distance and electrode geometry, we can plug and play. Though, I prefer letting a machine do that for me, giving a voltage required to jump the gap of 286,000 volts. So, in summary, an output of 286 kilovolts and 50 watts of power. At full charge, the battery provides about 5 minutes of arcs, after which, the taser can be recharged in 15 minutes. And as an added bonus, apparently mocking a rainstorm with this gets a reaction. Come on, I challenge you, I challenge you. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, I don't think I'll need to worry about bears ever again. And at a bare minimum, it's at least an incredible display of plasma. Axon Taser down in Arizona. If you want to see this in person, let me know. And you guys know the drill. Drop your thoughts down below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this and you keep it classy.